At this very second, Eric is traveling around the world in 30 days in a straight line. And if he fails, Mr. Beast will delete his YouTube channel. I'm going to show you five things Eric does to go viral in every single video. Number one, Eric's videos are really fast paced. I started counting. I'm watching his video going 1,001, 1,000 new shot 1000 I think the highest I ever got was four seconds for one shot but most of the time he's changing a shot every one to two seconds I know you're thinking Trevor how do I change shots every one to four seconds if I don't have that many shots you fake it like he did in this intro I am about to do a lap around the entire earth and if I fail I have to delete my YouTube channel in an effort to replicate what Eric did I went downtown and shot this open just like New York City, except there were slightly less people there because I live in a tiny little town. The open to Eric's video had a new shot every one second, even though it was just one shot. How do you do that? Well, in my video, I recorded a few takes of it, but it's really just one shot. I think this was the good take. So I'm just gonna take that whole thing and all I'm gonna do to get rid of all of this, by the way, when I teach you this stuff, it's not so you can rip people off and do exactly what they did. It's so you can learn these concepts and apply them to your videos. For example, I wanna get rid of all of this footage here, which if you don't know the right keystroke, you'd have to use a keystroke to cut it. Then another, then you have to click on this. Then you'd have to click delete. Then you'd have to slide this over. But if you know the right keystrokes, it's one keystroke, ready? To get rid of everything from here over, I just type the letter Q. Bam, all that stuff's gone in one keystroke instead of like, you know, four or five clicks and keystrokes. And now I'm gonna hit the keystroke Shift Z to make that fill up the whole timeline so I can see what I'm working with. And I kind of know what it says. So I'm just going to go to right about there and I'm gonna type the letter W to get rid of the end of this. Bam, W. Now I have the bulk of what I wanna use. I also know that I had another shot at the end where I said something else where I walked up to the camera. So I'm gonna jump up here and find that shot right here where my face is way too close. Don't look because you can see a stray eyebrow hair and my wife really hates that. And I think I just did this once. So I'm gonna get it roughly like this, position my plate at the end of the timeline, hit the plus sign, and find it more precisely here. I'm gonna show you five things Eric does to go viral in every single video. I'm gonna hit Shift Z again to get rid of all this. What I'm gonna do, W, because it wipes out everything at the end of a clip. And I'm gonna hit Shift Z again so I can zoom in and see this closer. And then right there. And so now I'm gonna type the letter Q again to get rid of this and suck it all over. Bam, remember those keystrokes, Q and W. This is most of what this video is going to consist of, but we're going to fix a couple things first. Number one, the color is not correct. So I'm just gonna show you how to apply a LUT, which is a fancy way of saying a filter to bring this color up. I shot it on what's called a log profile on my camera. So I'm just going to click on adjustment and I've added a LUT to my system. LUT stands for lookup table. I'm gonna click here and just select S log three, the only LUT I use. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this. And now the color is much, much better. The next thing I'm gonna show you might be a reason to get the pro version because it's really, really good. If you listen to this video for one second, just listen carefully, turn up your headphones. Not sure if you can hear that, but there are two issues. We have a lot of wind going on. And number two, you hear this this hum because I'm using the Rode Wireless Go and when I have the receiver next to my camera, the wireless connection on my camera picks up the radio signals from the wireless go and it and it hums. What I usually do is just hang that receiving end of the wireless go way below my camera so it doesn't do that, but I forgot. So how do we get rid of that? It's like, no, I shot this and the audio is unusable. Here's what you do. You click on the video clip, you click on audio, and we could use noise reduction, which will help a lot. Listen to this. At this very second, Eric is traveling. But this is game changer. Listen to this vocal isolation. At this very second, Eric is traveling around the world and... All the noise is gone. No wind and no buzzing. Super good, super useful. Not only can this feature get rid of background noise like wind and hums and buzzing, but it can also completely remove music. So if I had music playing in the background or there was a music track that I was talking over, the music would be completely gone and you just hear me. So that's... That's kind of a really, really fun. Everything you say is sounding so sweet. Everything you say is sounding so sweet. You'll notice that Airx edits are really tight. There's not spaces and pauses and waiting unless it's for comedic purpose. So we're just going to trim this up really quick and just basic 101 stuff for editing. We're going to listen. At this very... There was a space right here. There was too much of a delay in the beginning and I can see the waveforms. So I'm just going to get rid of this little piece right here by typing what letter? The letter Q. 
At this very second, Eric is traveling around the world in 30 days. I'm just going to tighten up the rest of the video and you don't have to watch. I've trimmed it up, but how do we make multiple shots out of a single shot? I'm going to position my playhead at the very beginning of the timeline, select the clip so I can modify it, jump over to Video Basic and set a keyframe for scale and position, and I'm just going to go forward a little bit. At this very second, at this very second, I'm going to zoom in during this period of time by dragging the scale up. And notice that it automatically set another keyframe and I'm still parked on that keyframe. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the position a little bit so that my face stays in about the same spot. So my eyes are at the same level. So I'm just going to drag it down a tiny bit and see this blue line means that it's staying centered. And this way it stays centered. Let's see. At this very second. So my eyes are in the middle the whole time. Now we're going to go one frame later and just add a cut here. And I'm just going to zoom in on me here quite a bit. So it feels like a significant jump. And then I'm going to drag my face down and make sure that it lines up with the face lines up here. Yeah, his eyes are on the same level. Yep, it looks pretty good there. And Eric is traveling around the world. And I'm going to jump in in 30 days here. 30 days. And I'm going to just add a cut here and jump in again, scale up. And one thing you'll notice that in Eric's videos, these shots, he pushed way in like this, and they were mostly out of focus. And guess what? It didn't matter. In the first few seconds, we have one, two, three, four. So we have basically four shots in a row. It keeps changing. Every second, it's changing. It's going to do that for the rest of the video. You don't have to watch. You get the idea, right? I've got most of this done, but I want to show you one more thing. Notice that I'm zooming in here. Mr. Beast will delete his... And then have a little faster, tighter zoom at the end. If you want to change the speed of these things to add emphasis, all you do is drag the keyframes closer together or farther apart. So right now... Mr. Beast will delete his... That was, you know, faster, but not faster. I want it to be drastic for delete. So I'm just going to literally drag this keyframe back a little bit. And now we have a more dramatic effect. Mr. Beast will delete his YouTube channel. Bam, I think that works really well. We don't want to just copy someone. We want to add our own flair to things. My thought was to create a graphic of Eric traveling around the world. So I'd need a world and a picture of Eric. I found this picture of Eric and I found this image of a globe, which we're allowed to use because it's under Creative Commons. You can actually search in YouTube under Creative Commons and find videos that they allow you to use. Usually you just need to give them credit in the description. So I'm going to use this video and I'm going to share all of these assets with you so you can practice using the stuff that I'm doing here. In fact, I'm even going to send you the video of me. So you can just practice doing exactly this. Luckily, this globe has a black version background and a green background version right here. And it's easy to get rid of the green in CapCut. It's not as easy to get rid of the black. So we're just going to drag this green down to the timeline. And we're going to get rid of the green by selecting Cutout, Chroma Key, Color Picker, and just dragging the strength up a bit until the green goes away. So now we're just going to scale the earth down and position it over here so it's not on my face. And it looks like this. Traveling around the world. And where we're saying around the world is where I want thing to pop up. Eric is traveling around. Traveling around the world. So I'm going to start it right there. 30 days in a straight line. And I only want it to go till about then. So I'm just going to cut it there and get rid of it. Cut. And I want to have Eric going around it. How can I have Eric going around it? Well, I'm going to position Eric over the world and I'm going to make sure that he fits exactly over it. And then I'm just going to cut him out by choosing cut out, going down to auto cut out. And bam, Eric is cut out and we can have him going around the world, but he's too big and I just want his head going around the world. So I'm going to jump over here to mask, select the circle mask, position it over his face, scale it up a little bit so we see a little more of him. And let's go ahead and make Eric go around the world. I'm going to click on basic and scale him down a little bit and position him where I want him to start. And I'm going to change three properties for fun to have it look like he's going around the world. I'm going to have, I'm going to change the rotation, his position and his scale. So it'll be kind of more fun for around the world. I'm going to put my plate at the beginning of the clip. And I'm going to select keyframes. A keyframe you may recall from prior videos marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. And the properties we are going to change are scale, position, and rotate. So I'll select all three of those. Bing, bing, and bing. And I'm going to adjust the rotation a little bit so that it looks like he's kind of rotating around the world a little. And then I'm going to move my playhead to the beginning. And I'll position Eric in the middle of the world here. 
and I'm gonna change the scale a little bit so it looks like he's getting closer to us, and I'll change rotation back to zero, and then I'm going to move the playhead to the last frame, and I'm going to move him over to the other side of the world, and I'm going to scale him back down, adjust his position, and as I do all of that, notice that because I changed position, it automatically added another keyframe right here, and then I'm going to change the rotation to the other direction like that, and now let's have a look at it. Traveling around the world in 30 days in a straight line. So that's a lot going on, but it keeps the interest up, keeps people engaged. Next, I'm gonna choose a tiny section of Airx video where he has Mr. Beast holding his laptop and his YouTube channel in it. So I'm going to click on this icon here and choose list so I can have a wider view of this and have a little more precision control. As soon as I click on it, it starts playing. And I'm gonna kinda of take over by using the keys J, K, and L. L goes backwards, K pauses, and L goes forwards. And as soon as I get to that shot, I'm gonna type the letter I to select an in point, go forward a little bit, and type the letter O to select an out point, and then click on this plus sign here. And it dropped it in here where I don't want it, so I'm just gonna drag it and put it where I do want it, right after I say delete his channel. So I'm gonna show it kind of blowing up right there, because I like blowing stuff up in videos. And you'll notice that it's covering me. I don't want me there just yet. I'm going to drag me over it. Oh no, I can't. How do I make that stop? I want it to go over here more. I just have to turn off the magnetic timeline, which is this guy right here. And now I drag this over and oh, it stays. What a relief. Let's see how this works. That's about where I want that to start, but I want it to blow up. Now, if you go into media and library on CapCut and you type in explosion and you choose type as video, it will show you some explosions, but you'll notice that if I grab, say, this explosion, I drop it on top of everything, just so you can see it, I can't see through it, and CapCut's not great at getting rid of the black background. So I removed the background for this explosion for you, and I'm including it in the free link down below if you want to mess with it. And I'm just going to adjust it so it starts right about there, and let's have a look at it. It's going kind of slow, so I'm just going to speed it up by clicking on it, choosing speed, and dragging it up to maybe one and a half. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty good, but now it just needs a sound effect. How about an explosion sound effect? We're going to jump over here into audio, select sound effects, type in explosion. Maybe. No. 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 Yes. So let's drag this right here and let's line it up so it starts right when the explosion starts. His YouTube channel. Oh no, they're still there. They didn't blow up. What do I do? Well, I want them to go away as soon as you can start seeing through the explosion. And to do that, I'm just going to drag this back here and it'll go to black behind or me. So I'm just going to drag me over here a little bit. So you start to see me and then I start to talk and I can take the volume of the explosion down when I start talking. Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to shoot. Bam. Now. I start talking here, you can tell because if I zoom in, you can see my waveforms here. And I'm gonna turn the volume down for this explosion starting just a couple frames before that. So the explosion's fading out. To fade out the explosion, make sure it's highlighted. Go up into basic, select the keyframe for volume and move it forward a little bit and just have the volume go all the way down to nothing. And then we can actually trim this off to nothing. And that way the, the explosion will just kind of fade out. This YouTube channel. I'm going to show you five things Eric does to What else can we do to make this better when this stuff comes in? Around the world in 30 days in a straight line. What if we could make them come on more interestingly? We can very easily. It's going to click on the Eric picture, jump over to animation, and choose an in, a way for Eric to enter the screen. Let's find something fun. How about shake? Traveling around the world in 30 days. That's fine. Now let's make sure Eric is selected and choose an out, a way for him to leave the screen so it doesn't just pop off. How about zoom out? Yeah, he just kind of fades away. And let's do the same thing for the globe. Around the world in 30 days in a straight line. And we could use a sound effect here. Traveling around the world in 30 days in a straight line. That's fine, but my volume's kind of low. I could raise the volume on all of me, but there's something that's better than just raising the volume, which is called loudness normalization. I'm going to select all of these clips of me, including the audio, select on audio, and select loudness normalization. And I want you to look at the waveforms when I check and uncheck that. So off, on off, on. It raised the levels of all of these audio clips and made them more even. That's what normalization is. It takes the highs and the lows and compresses them so that everything's a little more even. Traveling around the world in 30 days in a straight line. The only other thing really missing from this before I give you four more tips to go viral is a little bit of music. I'm going to click on music 
And he used kind of silly music, so we'll just type in silly. This one seems not bad, so I'm just going to click and drag it out of the timeline. At this very second, Eric is traveling around the world in 30 days in a straight line. The second thing Eric does to make sure his videos go viral is use something that Daryl Eves calls buckets, which are basically categories. So videos are related to each other, and he has probably three, four, or five of those different types of videos he makes. For example, a lot of his videos start with, I did something, I crossed Switzerland, I have to delete my channel, I tried banned inventions. Another bucket is, IRL, try not to scream IRL in real life. Truth or dare, IRL, would you rather IRL capture the flag, IRL. That's intentional, that's not on accident. A third category is 24 hours, look at this one. Facing 100 fears in 24 hours, busting 100 myths in 24 hours. You should do the same thing, create buckets or categories of content so that YouTube knows what kinds of videos you make and knows who to recommend your videos to. The third thing that Eric does is Many, if not most of his videos contain challenges and those challenges can fit in any of those buckets, but challenges work really well on YouTube because it gives a reason for a person to stick around to the end of the video. For example, I survived for 24 hours in the Bermuda Triangle. That's a challenge. Is he going to last 24 hours? So 24 hours is the bucket, but the challenge is surviving in the Bermuda Triangle. And it's not just the 24 hour stuff that is a challenge. Look at this one, sneaking into a Logan Paul versus Floyd Merriweather fight. Did he make it in? You have to stick, did he, did he actually sneak into the fight and make it? That's a challenge and nothing to do with 24 hours. So if you can make your videos have some kind of a challenge, some kind of an obstacle to overcome, some kind of a reason to stick around at the end of the video, it is going to do drastically better. The fourth thing Eric does is he trend jacks. What does that mean? What's trending right now in the world? We're going to click on Eric's oldest videos and see that he made a couple seven years ago that was just messing around. They have a lot of views now because he's famous, but he didn't get serious until four years ago where he trend jacked here. Look at this. Well, 24 hours, he started a bucket way early, but in the real Stranger Things town, around the time Stranger Things was popular. And if you look at his first videos, he is trend jacking popular people. Like in my prior video, you may have seen Ryan Trahan does the same thing. Look at this. I tried David Dobrik's ladder trick. Watches David Dobrik, Justin Bieber. The fifth thing Eric does is he does extreme things. Right now, he is traveling around the world in 30 days in a straight line. That's these last five videos are exactly that. If he doesn't, he has to delete his channel. That's extreme. He tried every impossible sport. He tried the world's fastest vehicles. If you look at all of Eric's videos, almost all of them fall into one of those three categories. A challenge, extreme, or trend jacking famous people, places, things, movies, anything that is trending. What's gonna give you an even better chance of going viral is using two or three of those things. My favorite example on Eric's channel of using all three of those things is this video, skydiving with Logan Paul's $90,000 couch. And I know what you're thinking, like, yeah, my channel's not an extreme thing. I'm not in my 20s doing crazy things and I'm not rich. I can't do any of those things you said. Yes, you can. You just gotta think outside the box. Let's say you're a gamer. I played Minecraft for 24 hours straight. That's pretty extreme and that's a challenge. What if you're a real estate agent? I went to the cheapest and most expensive house for sale in the entire country. Or if you don't wanna travel, don't wanna spend the money, you could do a series like, I went to the cheapest and most expensive house in my market. You know, every single month you could do that. What if you're a fitness coach? I got a six pack in six weeks. Bam, there is so much you can do if you just think outside the box. You could do this with literally any niche. There are two reasons none of your videos are going viral. Number one, you haven't implemented the five things I share with you in this video. And number two, you haven't mastered editing and you don't know the other 10 viral tips I share with you in my course, Master CapCut. Go to mastercapcut.com right now or click on this link right now to fix that and go viral.